Good morning. So um, I'm actually going to talk about how we think of AI in our firm. I got it. And why AI for a whole VC firm? Fundamentally, um, when, the way we view the world is that we've gone through various waves of disruption from the dinosaur era to all the way to the most recent um, phenomenon around pervasive connectivity. And I highlight pervasive connectivity as a term which basically means everything around us is connected. I bet you we have not hundreds of connection points today, but probably thousands just in this room, which in turn means that even in steady state, we're generating data. Why is that important? Fundamentally, because for the AI reality to come about, as we're seeing it now, especially in this phase of narrow AI, we needed three pieces in place. We needed computing power, not only to increase, but, only to, but also to contain and remain cheap and continue to decline in cost. We needed the breakthroughs that we saw in academia in mid-2006 and later in industry about five to six years later, 2012 onward, around deep learning and the various uh, you know, advances we're seeing around machine learning more broadly. And then that last piece of data, you know, remember big data a few years back? Well, we might as well relabel it as de minimis data because what we are seeing now in ex is exponentially higher and what we are going to see in the future will make today seem very small. So what does that mean if my remote control, um, this thing is not working. What does that, ah, here we go. What does that mean for um, us as a VC firm? So great, these are the paradigms, the drivers, where do you put the money? Well, one fundamental view that we share is that we are entering a phase where data is empowering not just decision making, not just how we code, not just how we develop, and not just the predictives, but actually the prescriptive, what ought to happen, already automated, already built. It takes us from a world where we're automating, if you will, processes, the mundane to free humans, to a prescriptive world where humans and machines are learning from each other. We're empowering each other. Put differently, we're entering a new machine-human symbiosis, a new dynamic between content and action, decision and consequences, which is entirely redefining how enterprises and products and businesses interact with various constituents. Relationships between employees and employers are completely being redefined, not just by cultural changes, but what we can do. We could never give just in time and in real time um, feedback to our employees, but now we can. And in fact, it's expected. Thank you, millennials. As we think about the customers, their demands continue to increase while willingness to pay may remain a bit steady. How do you do that? But by leveraging tech and predictives and fundamentally prescriptives. We also have regulators who is typically are late to catch up onto the game, but concerns around data, privacy, the ethics, and how we do right by all humans um, become more and more important, especially if lawmakers actually suffer the consequences of campaign breaches, for example. Back to a VC though, what does this mean for us and what are we betting on and what are we investing in? Well, because of data, because of machine learning, we're now able to deliver, or our portfolio companies and the opportunities we pursue, I should say, are able to deliver personalization at scale, develop once, personalize to all, to each individual whether it is in a learning environment. Think about those of you who might be developers. Could you imagine as you're coding that the machine actually is making recommendations to you in real time about what's best, what, how someone else solved that problem, what's optimal, and that what you are doing well is being shared with someone else to drive collective productivity. That's a new notion. It's no longer you know, automating the mundane. It's actually becoming value-add in real time with the human at the center. That's part of human augmentation. Smart infrastructure, you'll hear from Justin from Gennaro later today about what they're doing around some of solid and open source efforts. But for us is how do you free up data? How do you actually make it cheaper for new products and services to come about? So it's, this is an actual software layer. It's the data infrastructure layer. Uh, we think about cybersecurity. In the very first slide, I talked about um, how we have these points of connectivity. All of those thousands of points are also points of vulnerability. 
So how do we leverage AI and machine learning to protect us? How do we do intelligent tracking with predictives and prescriptives? How do we finally have the reality of a coordinated defense um, where enterprises anonymously can know where they stand? Is 20 million spent by a CISO for a large enterprise enough? Are they spending it correctly? But also coordinating how they're defending each other and themselves. And then fundamentally, how do we bring cyber security type protection to the physical security, which is still left behind? Thank you.